Now, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors I am, you know, I'm not Miss Pink person. <laughs> okay, here comes a good one. <laughs> Unexpected in the shadows. I like to put. Actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know. You ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with the shadows on the wall and doing little birds? <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we're going to do a landscape. I'm really excited about this. It's, it's, uh, I uh, searched, <laughs> up, drove up and down the county trying to find a good herd of cows <laughs> to paint because I was just in the mood and I finally found one and, and that's what we're going to do. Um, cow, the cows were cracking me up. I love their little shapes and, and, and big shapes and they kind of reminded me of... Uh, actually of myself because as I age, you know, my midsection is quite a bit larger than my legs and they have, <laughs> and they have, you know, and I was looking at those and I thought, you know, they, you know, if you look at just the shapes of these cows, they, they're, they're really unusual, you know, they've got um, a lot of girth there and, and these wobbly little legs. So I thought, well, that'd be great to paint. So we, and I love the way the light was hitting them. So we're going to get started. I'm going to start in the background first. And normally I would focus on the object, but I really think that it would be great to get a good start on that. And one thing that you want to keep in mind when you're doing a whole field of grass or something like that is at the bottom, it definitely needs to be darker than um, at the top because as it moves back, it, gets fa it fades out and uh, you need to get that perspective. So I'm going to start painting at the bottom. And first what I need to do is mix, mix a little... Uh, Oh, some sap green, maybe a little yellow ochre, and some red. And that's going to be a good base. That's actually very dark. This was a gray, cloudy day. And so I need to lighten that up a little. I'm going to add some white to that. So I can hear somebody saying, where's my Shannon? There's no bright, loud colors. What did they do with her? Well, sometimes it's good to be quiet. Okay, yeah, I really like that. That's a good base. So I'm going to just start there on the bottom and gradually get lighter as I go up. Get a little bit of medium. Put a little bit down, and then I think so that I cover the canvas real well, I think I'll turn it over. It makes it a lot easier to paint. Yeah, all right, that'll make it a lot easier. So I'm flipping it over. And I'm going to start introducing some more white to that and lighten that up. But I also see that little shadow. We've got to anchor this guy, so, guy, this cow. So I'm going to add that and maybe a little bit of, a little bit of sap green, a little bit of red in there so that we've got a nice deep shadow. Don't want to lose my place there. Otherwise he'll just be floating. And you know some of my work is really surreal but I didn't want this to be that surreal. So I'm just going to put in a little rough shadow. Love that bit of red. Okay, that's good. That's enough. Maybe at the bottom of each little hoof. These are going to be very abstract shapes. You don't need to say a lot to convey this feeling and to get the point across. Some people, what I'm trying to avoid is, is the equivalent of people who talk too much. I want to put a little bit down and say a lot with just a little bit. 
Okay, I lightened it up already. That's better. I still think this is a little too warm, but I'm going to keep, I'm going to cool it off as it gets further down the canvas. All right, so I'll add a little more light to this mixture here. And I want to clean my knife each time so that I'm not contaminating. There we go. I can see that uh, that's not a, a, I need to get this contaminated out of my, out of my mixture. Okay, there. Not sure what that was, but it needed to go. Okay, that's lighter, that looks good. A little bit of medium. That's nice. I'm wondering if I should, you know, I'm still looking at that thinking it's too warm. Now, if it's bugging me now, it's, it's not going to get any better if I keep putting more paint down. So if, you're, so if you're working on something and it's not quite right from the start, don't just do a whole bunch of it. <laughs> Change it right away. So that's what I'm going to do. And don't be, don't be afraid to, to make a change. It's just too warm for me. I'm going to add some phthalo turquoise to this mix. That might be too much, but I've got to give it a shot. There we go, that's better. Yeah, I think we can safely move on after that. Yeah, that's better. And I'm just throwing it right over the top. And I can even get some straight turquoise down here. There. See now, this, this was kind of a happy accident because it added some interest. Sometimes people will say, wow, you know, how did you plan to do that? And it's, it wasn't planned, it just, it just worked out that way. And sometimes it is. Okay, that's good. It's like building a foundation. You've got to be happy from the beginning. Okay, now I need to lighten the mixture a little bit. I'm going to pull some over, keep my mix here, and then just add some white to that. Need to clean my knife again. That might have been too much. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little more mixture back into that. There we go. Now, because my brush is dirty, it's really going to make this, yeah, that's good. It'll make this mixture sympathetic, very harmonious. Yeah, I like that. Almost time to flip it back over, but not yet. It's easier for me to reach this. You, you paint things that are easier to reach from where you are, so it's easier for me to, to go right up to the shadow from underneath than it is over the top. Wow, okay, so, so I put this down, and in the middle of painting, I get this wild idea and I thought wouldn't it be cool if because first of all you know how much I I usually got to use a lot of red <laughs> and there's no red in this reference photo so I thought wouldn't it be cool if instead of these mellow cool little uh, shadows I made them red so um, so that's that's the thought that crossed crossed my mind as I got started here so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna block this in and uh, see what I can do about changing that shadow. 
to, to a nice cool red. So don't be afraid to experiment. So as you're painting, you think, wouldn't it be cool? Well, go ahead and try it. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> well, the worst that could happen <laughs> is that it's really ugly. You don't like it, and you throw it out. I mean, or you could paint over it. But, you know, give it a shot, because the best that could happen is something really, really cool. But you don't know unless you try. And if you're chicken when you're painting, it'll show up on the canvas. And since we're doing cows, we got to be bold. Okay, I'm lightening up this mixture so we're getting further back. And it's just going to continue to get lighter and cooler as we recede. This is all mess of green. I usually like the warmer colors, so I typically, if I were going to paint a scene like this, I'd wait till summertime and the grass got brown. But uh, I love the way the light was hitting these cows. All right, so when you're painting in sections or in areas like this, it's okay to go ahead and use your strokes and, and just fill this form in, but then then go back over them so that it doesn't so that it doesn't look like your strokes went that way. It might be easier to paint that way, but you want the grass to have a consistent look. They got funny shaped legs. And I'm gonna make comments on that. Okay, I like that. Put a little bit more down and then I'm going to lighten it up some more. That's cool. All right, let's see how light we can get as we're going up further. Now, something that if you know, if I wasn't on TV, one way to do this and and to make it not and not contaminate your colors is to paint the background, let it dry, and then and then paint the foreground later. But we're going to be bold and do the whole thing today. Yep, I like that. Now I'm going to add a little more white to that. I'm always pulling some over in case I need it for later and before I add the mixture. That's my little safety valve. When you grow up in a place, in a big city, you're used to anonymity. So when you uh, you walk into the store, nobody talks to you, you don't talk to anybody, you're kind of invisible. When you move to a small town, or when you go to a small town, and all of a sudden, you know, you walk into a room and they all know each other and, and you don't, you know, it's like you walk into a cafe, and all of a sudden, people turn around, you know, it's like the room gets quiet, people turn around and look at you, and <laughs> I can hear somebody saying, where's she going with this? Kind of like Roseanne, Roseanne and Dana. <laughs> well, it's like the cows, okay? <laughs> you walk up to a herd of cows, and, um, and um, boy, they, they stop what they're doing. They turn around. They look at you. They protect their young. I mean, they're really checking out. They start talking to each other about the newcomer. It's the same thing, and it, it struck me when I walked into a cafe that, that, and I didn't know anybody. It was the same kind of thing. And it just, I don't know, it just struck me funny. So, but we're, we're not, 
<laughs> we're not painting the cafe today, though. I just love the way the light hit these cows. That's what we're doing. You notice these things when you're from the suburb. If you live in the country all the time, you probably take it for granted. Okay. Need to start lightening up some more. Oops. Just chopped off his nose. Things like that happen. You just put it back. I guess they wouldn't happen if you're a careful painter, but I'm not a careful painter. Okay, I'm going to move some more over. Clean my knife and add some white. Normally I would add some warmth or some orange back in this to warm it up, uh, but I'm not doing that right now. I may add some later. I really want it to recede. I'm using the same dirty brush. I'll be a little careful, a little more careful around his face. I keep calling it him. It was a her. We are not doing bowls today. No bowl today. Okay, that's getting lighter. That looks good. For such a small canvas, it seems to take forever to cover this little bit, but that's just part of the process. And some of the most meditative, reflective parts of the painting session are when you're doing background and you're not worried about anything other than getting the paint down. So when I saw the reference photo, I kept thinking of uh, Oklahoma and, oh, what a beautiful morning, and no, I'm not going to burst out into song, but um, this one's going to be more like the Ray Charles version. If I do it right. <laughs> if I do it wrong, it's going to be like Tiny Tim. <laughs> Oop, need some more white. I had a little too much medium there. Don't worry, we'll move on to some more exciting colors soon. Just have a nice silhouette of this cow. Oops, just almost chopped off that guy in the front. Now, I did move the, the herd around a little bit because they weren't standing in just exactly the right place. <laughs> I mean, you know, what are you going to do? So, um, and they were not cooperating, you know, like, hello, come stand over here so I can take this perfect picture. So, if you look at the reference photo, the cow um, right over the the main subjects um, back, um, there'd be this long space over there with nothing happening and that inactive space just didn't work. So I adjusted the, the, in the background, the cow on the right, I moved him over just a little bit and that helps the composition quite a bit. So uh, don't be afraid to, to move these guys to make it suit what you, you, know, what you need to do. It's your painting. When I first started painting, I used to try and copy the photograph exactly. I was so worried about getting a likeness. But sometimes I was copying bad compositions, so... Make it your world that you like. I have to get a smaller brush so that I can reach in between uh, these shapes. All right, so here's another little guy. Here's the one I moved. And these shapes are so bizarre. Might as well get 
these guys covered too before I miss them. My brush was just a little too big. Right in between these little, little shapes here. There, now, now I can paint without uh, worrying about what I'm gonna hit. I'm also gonna move my reference photo so I can see what else is back there. I don't wanna go too far. All right, so the horizon line is somewhere up here, so I need to, I need to stop somewhere in this neighborhood. That works. Gotta make a map. Okay. And now we shall fill in the rest. I'm gonna add a little more, just a little bit of warmth back there. It's just getting too cold for me. Sorry about that. Had to move that over. And the, you know, once we get around these shapes, it will uh, it will go a lot faster and be a lot more interesting. People say paint what you know. Well, it's not like I know cows, but <laughs> no, no, personally, <laughs> but. Uh, I do see a lot of them, so you know if, you don't need to know the anatomy of something to paint it. If you can see how the light hits something, that's all it that's all it takes. I don't need to know all the muscles. I mean, now that now that I'm sure that if you were really technical and you knew all the muscles and bone structure and that kind of thing. It would, it would only an aid in what you're doing. Uh, but I don't have that kind of patience, so as long as I can see the way a light is hitting something, then I can paint it. So I guess it just depends on how you, how you work. I don't need to know why, I guess that's what I'm saying. I don't need to know why anything happens, I just see the bottom line, this is what it's doing, this is how I need to get there. My granddaughter, she needs to know why. Okay, we got some shapes out there. Need to make that a little even lighter. That's good. So right now, so far, we've just done a lot of green. <laughs> But you can see that it's starting to recede as it gets, as it goes further back, and that's just because of the lightness and the coolness. If it was warm and light, it wouldn't work. Okay, I'm going to make a nice mellow gray. It was a it was a gray day. I'm going to make a nice little mellow gray for the background. All right, so I'm going to, oops, better clean my knife first. I'll take some white, some ultramarine blue, cad red light. Let's see what kind of gray we have here. Ooh, that's a warm kind of sunset gray. Whoa. <laughs> there was some rogue blue hiding there that I found. I kind of like what it did. So I made the mix, and now I'm going to hold it up to the canvas and see if that's going to work for me or if it's too dark. Ooh, I think this would be a good line right here, and then everything else would need to be lighter. So I'm going to use it for that portion and then lighten up the rest. So how do I do that? I'm going to take a slightly dirty brush. Put a little bit of medium on there. Okay, so it was more than slightly dirty. 
but I'm still going to use it. And I'm just going to draw a rough, scruffy little line here. And I'm pouncing on it in certain places, so I'm applying uneven pressure because I don't want just some funky little straight line. That's good. Now it seems like it's really too dark for that area, and it is, but we're going to blend it so it'll be okay. So I'm taking the scruffy brush and I'm blending from the bottom. And I'll do the same thing from the top with a different color. Okay, so that's a softer edge there. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to put that red in the shadow. I'm just chomping at the bit to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to make the lighter color with some white. That's a nice... That's a nice little neutral we have here. Might be a little too red, but I'm going to put it down anyway and see if I can get away with it. Well, I can get away with it down here, but I do need to lighten it up. So I'll put it down at the bottom, and again, the top has got to be lighter. So first my strokes are going to be horizontal and then it'll be vertical. And that'll give the illusion of some brush, some stuff going on back there. What I'm doing is I'm scrubbing really hard to get rid of some pencil marks that I have. I think I might just grab some straight white and put that down. Run out of paint. Talked about squeezing tubes, and um, it is a good idea to squeeze from the bottom, but usually I just grab it wherever I can and <laughs> get the paint out. But when you're borrowing other people's paint, it's a good idea not to do that. Okay. I'm going to grab some straight, you know, I'm just going to move that white down and grab straight white with a dirty brush. All right, so I had this mixture that has this peachy color there, which is too, too dark. And I'm going to add just straight white to it, a little bit of medium. Yeah, there we go. And if that's not enough, wipe your brush. Still has some paint on it, because I don't want straight white. That's better. This ought to work. So what's been happening so far in, in this painting session is sometimes you attack something and everything just works perfectly all the way down the right, all the way down the line. Today, we've done lots of adjustments. <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes it just works that way. It doesn't always work out right the first time. It's okay. Don't give up. I'll quit five minutes before the miracle. Oops. <laughs> I have a clamp where I could clamp down the smaller canvases, but I forgot it. Okay, so I went in one direction. Now, in order to get some, the illusion of some brush, I'll take my smaller brush, push some things up here, like let's add a little tree, something just, I'm just scribbling. There's a little tree there, some little brush here. Add some interest, and then I'll soften that. So first I'll go again in the same direction and then up and down. You kind of got a vague idea that there's trees and think something going on back there. Other than a straight line. I'm pushing this up here too. So 
I'm basically just taking that line and pushing it up. Pouncing on it. I could use some more. I want to add a little red. <laughs> I know it's really far back there, but that's all right. Just a little interest. Just because I'm going through <laughs> red withdrawal. Okay. So now I'm stepping back. Yep, that looks like something's going on back there. Okay, that's good. All right, so now I need to ground these little guys in the background. Um, and the other thing is it's only painted... I only put in three of the cows. The others back here, this little, these little guys up here, I decided not to add. I'm going to adjust the strokes. Okay, so the cows in the very background are just, when, when you're backlit like that, which is pretty much what they are, you really can't see any detail in what you're doing because, because the light is so bright around you like a halo that you can't see the features. So the cows in the very back are just going to be really odd shapes. And um, there's not going to be a lot of detail in the foreground one as well because you just, you just start looking at anything that's backlit and see how hard it is to really see the detail. But I like how they get these little halos. Okay, so let's see. We're going to mix. I'm going to add some red to this mixture here. I don't, it's too dark. To be that far away, it can't be that dark. Okay, ooh, that's nice. That reminds me of mocha ice cream. That's good stuff. Okay. So I'm going to block in the first one. Let's see. This little guy. I'm going to do almost a solid shape. This brush might even be too big. In fact, the brush is. I'm not used to working on something this small. And I'm going to get the rest of my paint off of this brush and move it over, and I'll switch to a smaller one. This is a miniature size canvas for me. So everybody is going to have their sense of scale, so find what you like. It may or may not be large. It just depends on what, what feels good to you. I don't know. This might be too dark, but I'm just going to put it down and get back and look at it. Oof. Way too dark. Way too dark. Now, that's interesting because when I put that down on the palette, it didn't look like it was that dark, especially if you look at the palette and you're comparing this tone to this tone, I thought, wow, I'm, I'm not that far off. But this is way, way too dark. So I'm going to clean my uh, brush off and put some light over the top. Again, we're adjusting. That's better. They just can't be that dark if they're that far away. They look pretty dark in the reference photo, but photos really, you know, you've got to see how they look in person. Yeah, that's better. Okay, he's got another leg. I'm not sure what that's going on. He's just a weird, weird shapes.
Let's see, that's more of a straight line here. So just get your little tiny brush and fill in the blobs. You can't see the face, you can't see any detail at all. I'm going to go ahead and put them in and see what kind of adjusting I need to do later. Now that's just one weird shape, but I have to let it go. Okay, so what is this guy doing over here? I don't think I painted green right, right up to him, so I need to do that. Oops. I got a little of the cow in the grass so <laughs> color, so I'm going to adjust that. These kinds of things happen. It really is a series of adjustments, so you got to be easy on yourself when things don't always go the way you plan them. And actually, it's a good thing that things don't always go the way I plan it because some really cool things happen when I'm not looking. I love the attitude on this foreground cow. And that's what I want to convey when we get that one painted. Oops, too dark. Got to go back into that light. I can switch over to the bigger brush. You always want to use the biggest brush that you can that's that's uh Yeah, it's, I, that's comfortable. It's really funny. You know, you start, you get out in a place like this and it's very contemplative, very peaceful. Of course, they probably don't think it's that peaceful when I go interrupt them. And that's the feeling that this painting's going to have, hopefully, when I'm done. And the only tension will be the look that this, the look that this one gives. Okay, so we have... Now, you know, very vague, very basic shapes of these guys in the background. But you get the idea of that's, you know, there's some critters back there. So you don't have to do a lot to get, to get that going. So what do we want to do but, you know, before we move on to this one? I still think that it would be great. Let me see what kind of shadows. I still think it would be red, good to put some red down there. So I can't leave that alone yet, even before I go work on that cow. And I'm going to grab some straight red. Do I want something shocker? Almost. I'm going to grab some of this perylene scarlet. Wouldn't that just be cool? And I'm going to put that over the top for the shadow. I'm going to move my photo so I can see that. Okay, there's a little, I think this goes all the way off the canvas, actually. And if it doesn't, I'm going to make it go off. Oh, that's just infinitely more interesting with the red. I'll blend that in. Okay, so you get to a certain stage, you, you get the background in, you get a certain part done, and sometimes it's good to just step back, 
take a little break and say, okay, where am I? Where do I need to go? Because when you're painting, you really shouldn't be thinking that's more of an automatic response. But then you get back and you can analyze it. So um, at this point, uh, not much that I want to analyze. We've got some good, it's receding pretty well. This, we've got a good basic start. Now I think it's time to go ahead and block in the basic shapes of this, this cow. And I just love the way she turned around and looked at me like, what are you doing here? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and get this. And the way the light hit her was just my favorite part. I'm going to overstate the light because that's the first thing to disappear when you start painting. I, when it's wet like this, you end up blending away all the really cool light stuff you did. So I'm going to put that in first, paint it bigger than it is on the canvas or big, bigger than it is in the photo, and that way when I blend into it, I'm not going to lose it. I'm going to take some uh, Cad Yellow Deep. Nah, I think I'll go with, with uh, Indian Yellow because that's even louder. Yeah, and that's going to be where the light hits. And we're going to play with color on this guy because, on this gal actually, because we can. Okay, so where do I see the light? <laughs> well, <laughs> I always get in trouble when I start talking about this, but um, <laughs> about where the sun shines and where the sun doesn't shine. <laughs> <laughs> and the camera people are in here shaking their head like, no, don't go there. Um, but anyway, the, <laughs> the top of the, of the cow really has a lot, lot of light. That's the main area where the, uh, <laughs> the other regions just don't have so much light. So I'm going to put that in first. Uh, And I'm actually going to be careful. I know it's hard. Got to do it sometime. All right, so light in the very back because this is backlit. And around the, around the edges. So I'm looking for the lightest light first around the face, around the ear, top of the body, I hope that when you paint you crack yourself up too, makes it more fun. Okay, there's light here. Just looking for all the really uber light areas. Let's see, there's some that comes clear down here. It's a little getting a little muddy, but that's all right. Let's see, there's just a drop of light right there. And right around the rear section. And the legs. So I'm doing all the light first. So one, it's, it's a map for me so I don't forget. And also it's that whole blending thing. You don't, it, you do tend to lose it. So I don't want to lose the light part. Because without the light and dark, there's no definition. It doesn't work. Light on each little leg. We're getting there.
Okay, there are places that are lighter, but there aren't. I'm looking for the lightest light and the brightest bright, and that's where they are. I'm just checking to see if I missed anything. Just basically along the outline here, this midsection here. Yeah. Okay. So now what are we going to do? I, you know, I think we need to start playing with the color here because one, because it's fun and because we can. So I'm going to start adding some violets in the shadows. So what do I want to do? I think I better do the darkest dark first and then sneak up on the middle tones. So I'm going to take some blue, ultramarine blue, some violet, add a little bit of that toned down mud color I made. And that's still too bright. I'll tone it down with a little green and red. Oh, that's nice. And because I used these, uh, all, all the other colors that are in the painting already, it's harmonious. It is darker than the other, but that's okay. This one can stand it. I'm going to, since it's a little closer, I can push the color, maybe add a little more red to it. Because I'm going through red withdrawal. <laughs> I said it earlier, it was kind of like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> it was like wed with wall. <laughs> Long story, but that was actually my nickname when I was a kid. Because believe it or not, I was bald. I had no hair for the longest time. Yeah. How that happened? Okay, so let's put in the darkest darks down by the hoof. That's not enough. I'm going to just push it with the color. I'm going to add a little bit of blue because I've been careful the whole show. And <laughs> I can't do it anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I'm going to start being bold with the color. Okay, that's better. Let's let's start with some fun things like no <laughs> nostrils, okay? Let's put in a nostril here. That's good. Just one little stroke. One stroke there. There, that's enough. And how about an eye? Boy, he's just he or she. She's giving the look. Okay, there's an eye there. Ooh. And I'll just move a little one over here. And then where else is there some dark? Right under this ear. I think that eye needs to be a little bigger. There. Right under this ear. Definitely needs a little shape of the tail. And on the other side of the tail. And let's start putting in the mid-toned. That, I'm going to add some more violet just because it's fun. And like I said, I'd been too careful for too long. Oh, yeah. Here's some in-your-face purple. Oh, I'll tone it down just a little bit, but not much. Maybe add a little green. There. Just enough so that they get along. Okay. So how are we going to quickly get this guy in? Well, ooh, that's pretty. Love it when that happens. All right, so there's some dark shapes here. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit just by going into that lighter color, the mixture that we already had. And let's add some dark to that ear. Lighten up the rear end just a little bit. Some definition. 
That violet does look happy against that green. And you can see I'm just putting down some rough strokes. It's not, like I said, I, I'm done with being careful. You're still going to be able to get a sense of what's going on. All right. So there's some dark right in here. Purple cows. Okay, that's starting to take some shape. Let's add a little bit of, uh, make it even lighter on the face. There's some dark right here. So I'm just looking at basic dark and light shapes here. Okay, I just, you know, I'd been painting enough cow faces that I have to admit, I started looking, I, I knew that this section would be a little bit different. So there is a combination of painting what you see and painting what you know. So I have to, I have to give you that bit of information. All right. Oops. That wasn't supposed to go there, but since it's there, it will live there anyway. Now I'm going to lighten it up a little bit to their legs. Sometimes you just need to get some instant results here. I'm going to throw some dark in. I'm just, again, going back and forth between dark and light shapes. This is going to be very impressionistic due to time constraints, but that's how I would block this in anyway. Okay, so there's a dark shape there, there, and this little leg. I love this purple cow. This is just fun. The other thing is you want to make look something look three-dimensional. It's got to be a little bit lighter here and a little darker down toward the bottom. So now we're getting two brushes. We're getting toward the end of the show where we start... painting how I really paint. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take some of this light right here. Whoops, I wasn't light enough. Oh well. Forget being nice and cleaning your brush. You just go into the paint and add a little bit of light right here because I want this belly to be round and it's going to be a little lighter there for that to happen. And so then we'll go ahead and Add some more light right here. There we go. Now you're starting to get some girth here. And what's this leg doing? This needs to be dark under here. Ooh, that was a little too bright, but that's all right. All right, so it needs to be darker under here. Some more legs. And just start slowly. Well, we can't do it slowly because we don't have a lot of time. We're going to just <laughs> give this cow some soul real quick here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to just go right under where this shape is, add the dark, and then with the bigger brush, define this section.
And what else can we do? He needs to be darker here and then just bring that up. A little bit of blue. And basically, I'm just looking at what's dark. You know, you don't have a lot of time, so what's dark and what's light? That needs to be dark in there. Now, see, this would be easier for me to paint if it was bigger. Because I wouldn't have to be careful, and that's the only reason. So it might be small, uh, you know, it might be fine for you guys to paint something. Depends on your sense of scale. All right. So we're just kind of finish off in these last few minutes. Very rough. So now the cow is starting to take shape, and it is the most abstract looking thing you ever saw. But you know it's a cow. So the point here in this whole thing is, number one, you don't, need, you don't need a lot of detail for it to read so that people understand that it is a cow. And the other thing is, that I hope you get out of this, is that you can really experiment with color. And you can put red in the shadow. And you can make your cow purple. And uh, you can make your world anything you want it to be. That's why we paint. Just going to throw in a little bit of color at the very end. This is when the magic starts happening. Okay, so you've got a rough version. You've got, you know, you look at it, it reads like a cow, it looks like a cow, probably moves like a cow. So, um, I hope you learned a lot about starting over and giving everything a new shot. Thanks for watching Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom.